What is up my fellow fly fishermen? Graham Ferguson here, host of Fly Casting Colorado. Today I was supposed to go ice fishing because a lot of stuff happened and I'll save that for next week's video. But anyway, I was supposed to go ice fishing today. However, it is a scorching nine degrees outside, which isn't exactly conducive to any type of fishing. I mean, if it was up to me, I'd still be on the water right now. Uh, I don't mind, but I mean, being the fact that I don't exactly have a car um, and I need someone to take me, that isn't exactly the best thing to put upon another person, um, making them sit outside in that type of weather or sit in a car in that type of weather regardless. Basically what um, I decided to do was, because I literally just didn't have a video to post for you guys, so what I decided to do is I decided to do a fly tying tutorial for two of my favorite flies to fish in the winter. And because of the fact that I haven't been able to upload a video, I decided to do two flies. So you guys are in for a bonus with that. So without further ado, I hope you guys really enjoy this fly tying tutorial and hopefully I can get some more fishing content out to you guys very soon. So the first fly that I'm going to be teaching you guys how to tie today is going to be the flashback zebra midge. This is a great adaptation of the traditional zebra midge, but the catch is it has, you guessed it, a flashback. And what I think that this does is it really draws fish into the fly and gives it that extra kind of shimmer that really draws the fish's attention. And I've noticed from personal experience that I catch a lot more fish on a flashback zebra midge than I do on a traditional zebra midge. The materials that you are going to use to tie this fly are going to be some black thread, some silver wire, a small silver bead head, some size 20 nymph hooks, I prefer curved shank, some pearl tinsel, and that's pretty much all you need. So the first step in tying this fly is going to be add some loose thread wraps and just get your thread started on the fly right behind the bead to make sure you secure it. Take your thread about down to the mid bend of the hook and then you can secure your wire. I like to take my wire all the way down to where the hook starts to curve back up towards the eye of the hook. Once you have your wire secured, you can begin to um, attach your tinsel, your pearl tinsel, and take that all the way down to where the wire is and make sure that those are nice and even. You always want to do the steps uh, like that because the wire is going to go over top of the tinsel. The next thing that you want to do is just use a bunch of thread wraps to make sure you have a nice tapered body, then fold your tinsel over to the eye of the hook and secure it right behind the bead, and you can trim off the excess as you want. Then secure that, and you can begin wrapping your silver wire up the body of the hook in nice, even, segmented wraps. This adds a lot more strength to the fly and make sure, make sure that the tinsel doesn't come off as well as giving the fly a really nice ribbed and segmented look. So once you are done adding all of your nice even wire wraps and you have it to right behind the bead, you can secure your wire using some nice tight thread wraps. And once you are done securing your wire and making sure that it's not going to come apart, you can start to helicopter the wire to get it to come off. It should break off nice and easily. I prefer helicoptering over scissors because it leaves less excess. And once you are done with that, of course, you can whip finish the fly. And your fly could be done there. However, I like to take the extra step to make it just a little bit more durable by adding a touch of UV resin. And this just kind of makes the fly have a bit of an extra pop as well as giving it a more natural look as a midge larva would underwater. So just doing one or two, maybe even three coats of UV resin along the back of the fly makes the fly a whole lot more durable. And I just think makes the fly look a lot better in general. So definitely don't be afraid to play with UV resin if you get it and just kind of experiment and put it on a lot of different flies, see how they look because it adds a very, very nice uh, natural look because air pockets and bubbles actually get trapped in the shuck of most of the uh, larval and nymphal stages of insects. So that makes it have a great natural look. 
And for the second fly that I'm going to be teaching you guys how to tie, I don't really have a name for it. I don't know, I just kind of freestyle my own flies sometimes. Uh, if you guys want to drop a name for it in the comments below, I don't know if someone's already created this fly. They probably have, and I just kind of made a rendition of it, I guess. But this is a worm fly. Worm flies tend to work very well in the winter because they're an easy, calorie-rich source of food for the fish, which are already deprived of calories due to the fact that the water is so cold and their metabolism is so low. So a worm is one of my favorite go-to attractor flies for the winter. But what I've noticed is that with most of the worms that um, you would see in fly shops, such as San Juan worms, squirmy wormies, is that they're very, very large. So I decided to tie a really, really small version of that. Um, in fact, I'm tying this on a really, really small hook in this video. I think it's a size 19 weird hook. I'll explain it later in the video. Um, but so this is just a very, very small small worm pattern which I think works a lot better in the winter due to the fact that you have to downsize all of your flies in order to get fish to be more ready to eat them. So for this fly you will only need three materials that being some red thread, some red larva lace or just red rubber legs, and some 18 to size 20 curve shank nymph hooks. In this video I will be using these T uh, TMC size 19 dry fly sets slash emerger hooks they're really strange they're very wide and very curved but needless to say they got the job done for tying this fly so one of the unique and essential components of this fly starts in the very first step that being that your thread wraps you want to keep very contained right at the bend of the hook so barely put any thread just about the amount that you see in the video then you can pull out your larva lace probably about a four three to four inch strand of it and you can take that and secure it into that little patch of thread that you placed uh, right like down towards the end of the bend of the hook and make sure that you secure that down nice and tightly and once you have the um, larva lace nice and secured what I've noticed is that a trick is you should make two or three loose wraps and then tighten uh, so don't go right away with tight wraps because that can kind of twist or bend the larva lace or the rubber legs. Then you are going to want to whip finish that little section that you did right there, making sure that you don't catch the uh, larva lace at the front. If you have a material holder spring or whatever in the back of your vise, you can fold the excess back. But just make sure that you get a nice tight whip finish in that really small patch of thread that you use to secure the larva lace uh, back there. And once you are done doing that whip finish, you can actually just snip off your thread, making sure that you don't get any um, thread up from the shank of the hook and you're only uh, wrapping thread in that small little tight area. If you get the larva lace uh, like I did there, you can just pull it out using whatever method that you want. A lot of times you can use your hackle pliers or even the um, uh, upper part of your whip finish tool to just grab it. Next, you want to secure another small patch of thread right behind the eye of the hook, and then you can tie down your larva lace. I like to make kind of a hump in the fly, sort of like a little arch by basically just pulling back on the larva lace and making sure that you um, basically make it so it's hunched over like that, and that'll give it kind of a more of a wormy look. You can adjust that to how you want. Just make sure that your wraps are loose. I like to do a few wraps in front of the uh, larva lace next to the eye of the hook like right underneath it and that usually secures it a little bit better and then you can whip finish over top of the larva lace on that other small patch and then you can snip when you're done and your fly is pretty much complete I think that it looks a lot better without the thread running down the um, middle of the hook but it honestly shouldn't matter so if you want to skip the two whip finishes you can do that but that's pretty much that fly so those were my two favorite winter flies uh, and how to tie them. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you guys want to see more fly tying tutorials such as this, uh, let me know and I will be glad to do that for you guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I should be able to get some more fishing content out to you guys very soon. And apart from that, I will see you guys next week and hopefully I will have some awesome new content for you guys. Peace out.